over the next hour just about the newest episode of the mandalorian and just like last time we were live uh big thanks to chris for getting us together for doing these things so every monday it you never know something might happen but every monday we're always going to be on here um chatting with you guys about at least yeah. the newest episode of the mandalorian and then when the mandalorian's done we'll just be talking star wars every monday absolutely man i'm excited to do it um now, I want to make sure I heard you correctly before we get too far into the chat. You said we're going spoiler-free today? It's Monday, man. Okay, okay, okay. That's what, no, I was about to say, yeah, we're about to get into it. That's what I thought. I'm about to knock over on my stuff. <laughs> That's Monday. It never fails. Like, <laughs> it never fails, dude. I had plenty of, uh, I, I can always, my favorite word now, I'm um, being as sarcastic as possible in the English language, is when people say bra. I can't stand it. <laughs> and when I get it in messages and comments, and especially when I get it about Star Wars, like, bruh, spoiler, bruh, spoiler alert, bruh, like, oh, dude, like, calm down, man. man that's, that's, I feel the same way, man. Some of these, these music nowadays, I'm like, man, I don't even know what, what, they're, what they're saying have the time. You know, sometimes I feel like, man. like I listen to I guess, yesterday's yeah. hits. I don't listen to today's hits. I listen to yesterday's hits. But. <laughs> right, I guess I'm an old dude now, man. Once you turn 30, I don't understand the language anymore, so... <laughs> Maybe I'm old school. Like people have to explain a lot of words to me now. All right, you guys in the chat, we're gonna get going here soon. Let us know kind of generally what you guys thought of the episode. Again, I'm ready to get into it. I, I liked what I saw. I can definitely tell you that. Um, Nick, I don't know Thank if you've listened to anybody get into it just yet, but all right, man. see, R two, R two's got that. If I could send a like back, there, I would. If you haven't watched it yet, go watch it. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, if you haven't watched it yet, definitely get out of the chat. Like I said, we're about to, we're right about to get into it. Yeah. You ready to do it, Nick? You want to wait a few more minutes? So what you thinking? All right, so newest episode, what was it called? The Siege? The Siege. So, the Siege. <laughs> so the first thing I like is we got everybody back. Um, we got the full list. Cara Dune was back. Uh, Grief was back. We even got to see the dude. Um, Forgive me for not knowing every single creature. The one that he got from the very first. And I wasn't episode. expecting to see him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, the very first episode. Uh, babe, yeah, Baby Yoda throw up was probably the cutest thing I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> even when Mando turns around, he's like, I'm like, you okay there, buddy? Yeah, yeah, I'll take care of you. It just, it just shows how much that relationship continues to build and how sad it's going to be when he does have to give the kid away, if he's got to give the kid away. Um, well, yeah, and we got to be prepared for that. You know, it could happen any time now. We don't know. <laughs> right. And then and we got all of our characters back, man. So it felt like the gang was all back together in that one. And it just goes to show that we, I don't think that there's a lot of crazy things that are going to, like seeing Bo-Katan last week was really nice, or the week before last, excuse me. We got the Ahsoka name drop. So we're going to see some things that surprise us. But overall, I don't think any of us are like blown away with the direction they took in the last episode because we knew for a fact you're not going to take Ahsoka away from Dave Filoni and he's directing the next episode. So that's when you're going to see her. So everybody was like, yeah, we're not seeing Yeah, her. it wasn't going to happen this week. Yeah, we, we all saw that. But, and like you were saying, the setup for this, you know, seeing Grief again, seeing Cara Dune, that, that was awesome, you know, getting them getting back into Navarro and seeing the school they made, you know, that kind of took me off guard. I was like, oh, right. putting Baby Yoda in school, they're going to leave him there and he just... <laughs> He's right. the force to, to get his cookies. I, don't, I forget what to call it, macaroni. Already being a bad kid in school, man. Like, I'm going to steal your cookies. <laughs> and I'm going to look at you while I eat them. If that's not a Sith kid, I don't know who is. Hey, but usually the kids are like, looking out for Baby Yoda. That was the first kid we see go like, I ain't about to give you no of my food. Everybody else is usually trying to spoil the kid, <laughs> giving him whatever he wants. That was his first time. Like, yeah. <laughs> Mommy like Napoleon Dynamite. Like, give me one of your tots. <laughs> But yeah, dude, no. I just loved it. And then, dude, every and we just talked about it too. Like Giancarlo Esposito needs to be in every episode. I have yeah. to get more of him, man. It's like it's like Will Ferrell needing more cowbell. I got to get more Giancarlo Esposito. Like I need that dude in there at all times. And that and that's where I, you know, really where I was gonna go. And we'll talk about what part of this episode. But I'm at the point with this season where I can say hasn't finished yet, but. To this point, I think I like season two more than, than season one. Like, you know, where this is going to go, you know, what we're about to see predictably coming up after this episode, like you said, we still need to see a lot more Moff Gideon. Probably that's going to be the end of this season. Like, there's still so much to come. Like, I can only imagine what, you know, what <laughs> we're about to see here. You know, where the story's about to turn, you know. Right. Uh, 
let's and so the end of the episode i think that's what we'll go ahead and knock out the biggest thing that everybody wants to talk about first at the very end of the episode i didn't know and i'm glad that it's kind of gone around now like the next time i watch like this friday when i watch the mandalorian i'm gonna watch it once regular and i'm gonna watch it a second time with the audio on the audio um subtitle the subtitle yeah because i didn't know it literally breaks like when it showed the ship it when it broke down the ship i was like jesus man this is like so detailed like the woman speaking this is a something something class ship with four starboard engines and, and it broke it down and then it huh. told us exactly what kind of troopers we were looking at at the end of the episode but, oh did it okay yeah the dark troopers so i guess when you go all the way back to the first season and you knew that they were dr pershing who made another appearance in the show when he took the kid and he was drawing the blood we we're like okay clearly maybe what they're trying to do here is make either some kind of clone or, or yeah manipulate or the clone, force or maybe yeah. he's going to inject himself with that blood and right. see if he can take on those abilities but dude the the shot we got of the guy in the tank and i want to shout out sith lord for sending it to me and i guess uh her son was the one that pointed it out and now some other people are if you zoom in on that picture man that big scar runs right across the head and it looks just like smoke you're now, talking about in the in the lab chamber right and yeah I'll, yeah I'll, yeah I'll, yeah after we're, done chatting, like I'll, yeah, after we're done chatting i'll put the picture up in my story with that zoom in you'll see that massive scar just like snow now i don't know where that fits in the timeline and i'm not even saying it is snow but I mean, it could definitely be a prototype. I mean, it looks like, right. you know, it looks pretty like on the nose. You know, when you look at the Rise of Skywalker, what it looked like in there, you know, and that's what right. at least 30 years past the fact, you know, that could have been a prototype of Snoke. That's, you know, we don't know that for sure, but. But we know Snoke was an actual person because Dr. Pershing says the test subjects. Right. Mm -hmm. So that to me, that means that these were people or somebody that he was working on and they didn't make it or clearly it's not working. I need more blood. So if it was Snoke or a version of Snoke and they end up we end up finding it out it was him, then to me they are gonna get the kid. For sure. And then it also speaks to we hear Mop Gideon say, like, that child means more to me than you would ever know. And you have to think about that. So is he just is Moff Gideon's ultimate plan, is he trying to, you know, bring Palpatine back or, you know, fulfill this mission for Palpatine of bringing this Snoke back to life, if that's what happens. Or some people have thrown out and this is, you know, possible, but maybe, you know, second or third along the lines of just like um maybe he's trying to become force sensitive himself he's never seen that before i don't think i want anything like that but it's not far-fetched to think that someone might think that they can do that not saying he's going to actually do it but he may think that he can do something like that somehow and he's trying to figure out hey maybe i can <laughs> get you know use the force somehow you know but right again you never know what, where it's going you know when you have the scientists involved and, and you know where the story may go right there are a lot of rejected like yeah but i mean the biggest thing for me is i was i was going into season two thinking that gideon was a lone wolf he was his own part he was mm. back to the empire kind of maybe building his own thing maybe he was going to be the spiller of during this time period a part of the empire started to get pretty powerful it was run by right. and somehow they end up losing and then the first order comes from that so i really thought that but watching all this now really doesn't it, whether it's a version of Snoke or it's not a version of Snoke, I lean more towards that Gideon is working for the Emperor. I don't think he's a lone wolf. Yeah, no, yeah, for sure. Especially yeah. if we find out that that thing is Snoke, then we know that that's one of Palpatine's creations. And, and that's what I was going to say. Yeah, exactly. Uh, whatever he's saying, he needs this child so bad. Whatever he wants to do, it's for a higher purpose. Like it's you know, it's for to accomplish something that is higher than himself. You know, so yeah, you're, you're right. I mean, again, I can see it anyway. But this is just where this is where the story is going. You know, I like it. I think it. You know, they have a lot of different ways they can go with it. The fact that we're seeing Ahsoka so soon, you know, who knows if she'll get involved with Moff Gideon, you know, later on in the season. I don't think that's – it could go down. It could go down Friday. I could be surprised. Maybe it's all going to go down Friday. We see Ahsoka versus Moff. I don't think so. I think that's going to be later on in the season. But, again, uh, I mean, who knows what we'll see. They showed us that for a reason, though. Like, they stopped everything and made sure we saw those, you know, that lab and, you know – there was definitely a purpose behind it. Right. Well, I'm going to read the chat a little bit. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, Ahsoka's blood. Reject this note. Yeah, they said something about it. He rejected the blood. I remember seeing that. Yeah. Oh, I want Thrawn, dude. I want Thrawn as much as I want Revan. So let's hope. Uh, I'm going back here. Uh, Gideon's trying to create early cloning. This is from Star Wars Legends. Back this up, brother. 
if Gideon is trying to create early cloning stages for Papeltine, then that means he had to have been really close to Papeltine. Because if we look at the Battlefront 2 campaign... And he could have been, you know? know? He could have been real close to Papeltine, or... I think you would have to know Papeltine if you're a mom. Right. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, on some level, yeah. It's... Yeah, you, I mean, you're up there at the top of the Empire food chain if you're a moth. So I can only name a couple of my, I, Actually, how many moths can I name? <laughs> maybe I'm four? I don't maybe know. More than me, dude. Yeah, four. okay. Yeah, no, maybe. I was just, I was trying to get, <laughs> cover my ground in case there's one I forgot. <laughs> you know more than me, but all I know is like moth is from reading the Thrawn novels. You're up there. So clearly Gideon knew the Emperor, and I don't know, man. Like, God, it just, it's, ooh, that's the most intriguing thing right now. Not necessarily, like, I almost feel like the Mandalorian, it's kind of getting into this direction now where none of us are really going to care about the Mandalorian. We're only going to care about what happens to the child and what's the bigger plot and what it's attached to. For sure. And that's, you know, we're talking about this season specifically. It'll be interesting to see how this season ends because you're right. But so far when they do things like that, they don't carry it over to it doesn't linger too much so again we see boba we don't see him again even in the first season he's teased you know bo katan we see her last episode who knows if we'll see her again this season so far the only thing that's been consistent is this moff gideon empire like presence but like you said it seems like maybe in the future there might be a point where we are dealing with you know maybe multiple force users or just like you said snoke palpatine kind of stuff which again i think it was ex to be expected right to, on some level but how far is it going to be like that? How far are they going to go into trying to tell the First Order story or trying to focus on, you know, Bo-Katan or, or, you know, Force Sensitive, whatever they want to focus on and not, like you said, the Mandalorian and, you know, his quest or, you know, whatever his journey is. It's, it's a fair point, you know. Uh, I think it's, we're still at that point where it's yet to be determined. I still could see it working out either way. You know? No, I agree with you 100%. Like, how many episodes you got left? Four? We got four so, left, right? And we know. So clearly, we're assuming we know the next we see the, you know, Ahsoka next episode possibly. That's what we're all assuming. But Gideon's waiting for him because now they're tracking where he's going. So, if I had to be, if I was a betting man, I would probably put it on. Yes, he meets Ahsoka, regardless of whatever Ahsoka does with the kid. Gideon is waiting there. There's an ambush. I think Gideon ends up getting the kid. I think then the Mandalorian might have to go get help. So maybe that's when he gives that armor back to the marshal. I don't know. And then it's and it's like everybody or try to get with Bo Katan and see whatever help he can get, come back and get the kid. But then again, we might be left with one of these situations where Gideon gets what he needs from the child. He's yeah. Have and Sith Lord brings up, yeah, there's there's still a lot that can happen. I mean, we're just we're just kind of talking about it. I mean, there's, like we were saying, we don't know where it's it's gonna go. It's not, you know, we'll see where it goes and we'll see the execution of it. How's it all gonna land? You know, like I said, I, I've had no complaints. I really like this season thus far. I love, you know, the little things we've seen from Bo and even where it's gone. You know, seeing possibly, how, you know, Snoke's prototype. I think that's all stuff that I want to see from stuff in this time period. I mean, this is where we're at. We're transitioning into. The first order you know new republic era like what does that look like how did this all come about because it had to happen somehow we don't know how it happened and that's what you know that's what they're trying to give us we didn't know we don't know how much we're going to get from that in the mandalorian but that's we're waiting for that story i mean i know i am i'm ready to get it um, right, where it sits in the where it sits in the timeline we're kind of in this weird little unknown period right now so i keep thinking to myself like what would be an, a big oh shit moment just like when we got the dark saber at the end of the first season so right Ezra, Thrawn, maybe mm -hmm. we get a Luke. I still want that Luke Skywalker name drop. Maybe we get somebody. A For sure, so definitely be a Luke name drop. Because right, Ahsoka has to know who Luke is. Like, come on now. You can't, you got to at least know who the hell Luke is at this point. So, Which maybe, is going to be great if we find out that those two characters had a relationship on any level. I mean, that's going to be <laughs> awesome. Even if he mutters his name, like I would, oh my God. Probably <laughs> throw your hands in the air moment, like, holy shit. So, I, I don't know. All I know is, is, like, based on what we saw in the most recent episode, you know, the best thing about it, too, is what I'm saying is, like, with the cloning, it, that doesn't seem that far-fetched. That is a very real and... Yeah, we know it, yeah. ...long, long plot of, oh, they want to create super soldiers with the kid. That's basically what we're seeing right now. I want to create right, four right. sensitive soldiers. And I don't even know if they talked about that in Legends. Somebody in the chat might know, but... Dude, it, it's, it was such a good episode. I know a lot of people just want to get to next week, but 
it really set up a lot, explained a lot. Yeah, it, and that's why I was talking about how good this season was because I think just from what I saw, you know, social media, Twitter, it seemed like this wasn't people's favorite of the season. And that says a lot about the season because I really liked it, you know, and it did set up things in the future and it did show us a lot, you know, um, even from, from Moff and, and Mando, you know, and Navarro. The city is hopefully going to be cleansed, like, you know, to a certain level, you know, but... Yeah, I, I think there's pretty much that's a I know I cannot wait till Friday. Um, one thing I did see mentioned is I think we should bring it up on the chat. Chat, let me know how you guys feel about this. They were talking about how the Mandalorian releases so early in the morning. I don't know if you've ever watched it, like at two o'clock, three o'clock. Um, but it releases so early that people that are watching it, they they don't feel like they can talk about it because like no one's watching it together. Everybody's watching it at a different time, you know. Even like when we're having this, we're making sure it's Monday so we can talk spoilers. Maybe they should release it like, uh, I don't know, like Thursday night or even just wait till Friday night so people can kind of watch it at the same time. Maybe not something we have to go all the way into, but just something to think about for season three, possibly. Yeah. You know, it could just could work out just like, again. Because we're going to be waiting to see Ahsoka. I know I am. Like, I want to be like, I can't wait to see what that looks like. You know, and I'm not going to be able to just, you know, because we're not all watching it there. I don't want to spoil it or, you know, feel like I can't. Express. Some people feel that way. I, I someone said that, and I thought, okay, I can understand that point. Somebody asked in the chat, do we think we'll uh, see Boba Fett this season? My again, my answer is going to be no because he offers nothing to what's going on right now. It's enough, yeah, uh, he, he does nothing to move the story forward. He does. I don't think you're going to see him again. I thought it was really cool for like five minutes, and then as I said before, like. It's just another guy they brought back from the dead. So after the initial high, you're just like, oh, God, another guy that's returned. So I wouldn't no. be surprised. Oh, God. Go ahead. Oh, real quick. That's what I was going to say. I, I don't think he offers anything to where we're going right now. So Boba Fett would maybe be next season. Or we might not see him again. He could show up in somebody else's series. That's where I, that's where I was kind of going to go. I think we will see him again. They're setting up something with him. But like you're saying, like we would have to go back to Tatooine to see him again. And I just don't see why the man was going to go back to Tatooine again. Uh, but you know we'll, we'll see how that all how that all shapes up. Someone brought up Ahsoka maybe being like a Kenobi and Rebels, just a, a quick fight if she fights anybody. I could definitely see that um, because no one should be on her level of combat. You know, uh, you know, even with the dark saber, I mean, she can disarm that. <laughs> I mean, she went toe to toe with Maul. You know, she bested Maul. What does it What's say? What's the OC Shadow Scout, my boy? Um, the hype for Chapter that? Thirteen is like. Is like a saga film, and that's what I'm saying. Like he's bringing up the hype for the next episode, but since it's gonna come out at like two o'clock, we're not gonna be watching it together. Which again is fine; it's not the biggest deal in the world. But it would be dope if we could all, as fans, just kind of be talking about it, tweeting about it, sharing just our reactions to it at the same time without. I don't Dude, know. Thursday night, I'm gonna be all jacked up on turkey and bourbon, <laughs> so I, my ass is not gonna be at <laughs> 3 a.m. Oh. I'm right. I'm not Thank that together. Thank yeah, I'm right. not even putting that together, yeah. dude. <laughs> No, I give it a zero percent chance I'm awake at three AM when that thing drops me to watch. I'll get up in the morning and I do what I do every Friday. I avoid my phone, I leave it on the charger, I go sit down, I might answer a message or two real quick for somebody I know hasn't seen it, and then I go watch it. Uh Sid Lord says he'll make a small appearance in the finale. Hey, I, I'm thinking about that Thanksgiving food for a little bit. Appreciate that. Best holiday of the year coming up. Um but yeah, who knows? Who knows if we'll see? And I think, you know, uh definitely could see it. Either way. Oh. How much time do you think has passed between the first season and the second season? That's a good question because there was something that was said in this episode that points to, oh, yeah, he was like, this transmission is from three days old, you know, which means obviously some time has passed. Um, I would say I don't think it's been a year, but at the same time, they did clean up Navarro a lot. So it, I really That's don't know. That's what I'm asking. Like, oh, yeah, like they cleaned overnight. up Navarro really quick, but all the other clues – would say something like maybe a few months at the most, you know, because again, there hasn't been a year's worth of Mando going around with baby Yoda stuff going on. Like it's maybe been a month or two, you know what I'm saying? Like it doesn't seem like they've had too much going on, I guess from my perspective, you know, but yeah, I'd say a couple of months. Yeah. But at the same time, Navarro, I mean, they, they got the school, which again, Navarro had some kind of community beforehand, but it didn't like they were going to have <laughs> that kind of, you know, uh, setting for a while. I'll be at work watching it. No spoilers. Oh, she'll be at work and watching. Okay, okay. No spoilers. Turning white. Oh, yeah. And, and oh, he did mention Grief Carga's beard is a little different. Okay, yeah. Some, so maybe, okay, say there has been a year's past. Um, 
Street think about what I said. Street turning I, white? I didn't even notice that. I don't, I don't know how much grayer it is, but it's definitely, he has something different going on with his facial hair. Again, it could I just be a few months. That. Like, holy shit. Yeah, it could, it could be just a few months. It doesn't mean it had to be a year. It could be just a few months. But again, I just don't see how there's been a year's worth of adventures or like experience like that. You know what I'm saying? Like not a year's worth, like maybe a little bit to grow and do some stuff. But what's the chat saying? Heard that I'm, they're saying something. I, I don't know. A Less than a year. Long time. Yeah. That's yeah. a long, I, I'd say like six months at best. I, the reason I ask is just because when I saw the episode, I'm like, wow, he really cleaned this place up quick. How long has Mando just been flying around with this kid? Really, <laughs> you know, he's looking for his own other Mandalorians to help him out. But really, how long have you been looking, dude? So that's what exactly. threw me off about it. Because it's, it's like, oh, we built schools now. <laughs> Everything is nice and perfect. And I'm, I'm stuck in all this clerical work. And now he's kind of like, he's, you know, the administrator of this facility. I, I kind of love that. <laughs> right, yeah. That little <laughs> callback there. Um, so that's that why was... I was just so confused. Like, how much time has really gone on here to where, and not only that, but remember Dr. Pershing, according to three days ago, whatever we are right now, he just ran out of blood. Mm -hmm. I got yeah. enough kid. I got enough right. blood from the kid, and now I'm out. I need that subject again. Otherwise, this is basically what it, it is what it is. So, a little bit of that child's blood has gone this long with testing all of these different individuals because there was well, many tanks yeah. in there. And actually, now that you say that, I kind of take back some I'm saying. I, I was saying that we're not going to see anything go down next episode. I kind of take that back because, again, three days ago, Moff Gideon knows he needs more blood. Yeah. So he's going to be after it. Now he's got a tracking device on the Razor Quest on top of knowing he needs it. I mean, this might be his opportunity thinking, all right, now's the time to pounce. I'm on him right now you know so it could if he gets to whatever the planet is where so supposed to be um it could go down there on the way there or something so and what does he have that's another thing i'm curious about we finally got to see him in a star destroyer but is that it that's his entire fleet is it one ship or is he running uh, like a major part of the empire right now the empire is we very don't much know around. everybody everybody keeps asking like I get um, messages about it, like, oh, I thought the empire was done. No, the, right. the empire is very much a lot. The first order is the empire. It's what's left of the empire that becomes right, the first right. order. So there's a lot of the empire that's around at this time. But they were just like the old canon was that they were split into factions and, yeah, and people still believe in the empire. Of the galaxy. Yeah, people still believe right. in the empire. That's for sure. As far as Moth, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't have much more like a bunch of Star Destroyers. I mean, that's probably his. Maybe there's a, a few others, but I wouldn't expect too much. Again, he has his, you know, his firepower, you know, uh, as much as he can. You know, again, he's not the Empire. He's not even a fraction yeah. of it. Uh, can't wait to see how so, but yeah, it's going to help. Uh, you and, think we'll see anyone from the Rebels crew. I, either Sabine or... Ezra. Did they say Ahsoka being with someone from the crew? He was asking, do you think we'll see anybody from Rebels? I was thinking oh. Sabine or Ezra. Yeah, Ahsoka could possibly be Sabine. Again, I just can't wait to see what, what Ahsoka looks like, you know. Um, I just, I'm sure they're going to nail it. I'm sure they're going to nail it. But yeah. yeah, I think it's like a, a pretty simple conclusion for all of us to draw. And just like Chris and I said last week, guys, you know, we're fans too. This is all speculation. Though. Exactly. We're not, talking <laughs> right. to anybody over, we're not talking to anybody over at Lucasfilm and they're hooking us up <laughs> with some information, okay? We're fans right. too. We're, we're all, this is a guessing game for all of us, but. I, mm -hmm. I look at it like since Dave Filoni was so heavily involved in Clone Wars and Rebels, and he's involved in The Mandalorian, you're going to get so much shit that ties back and forth to it, especially it characters. Yeah, I mean, so it was in the first season and it revved up in the second season. Yep. Right. That's why I think you could see Ezra. I know Chris really wants to see Ezra. You could see Sabine. Okay. So, uh, really, I, I don't know. What happened to, I mean, Thrawn would be my, like, I'd fall out of my chair. Um, but he I don't know. Thing, yeah. Yeah, I just, I really don't know at this point. The question is, is what's Ahsoka going to do this Friday when she sees the kid? And everybody's leaning towards, she's going to say, I don't want him. Well, she's going to tell him, you know, she's going to tell him that I'm not a Jedi. I'm not but, a Jedi. I mean, she's going to recognize that she's going to know that, you know, I don't think she's going to just abandon him or, or the child. But I don't, I don't know what she's going to say. I really don't. I don't know what Ahsoka's going to say about the child or what she's going to do with it. I just know that she's not going to abandon the situation. We know that that's just not in her. Like she will, she will help out, but she may not be willing to train the child or, or you know, like take it under her right. wing. Like, yeah, she might just say, "Hey, like I can point you in the right direction. I can help you out." And again, if Moff's on his tail, she might just be have, you know, 
just be just thrust kind of, in. I think she'll be, yeah, she'll be forced into a situation. Because look at it this way. The I same thing happened that. to her when she left in the first place. She just got caught up in with those uh, sisters. And all of a sudden, now she's fighting against the Pikes with brought her in back to Mandalore. Like, she just, she just always getting just caught back into it somehow. <laughs> right. So here's something I was thinking about. And you, Chris, let me know if I'm crazy or if it's not that far-fetched. Guys in the comments, you stop me if I'm crazy. The kid right now, the child, is basically the easy prey. We can get our hands on this dude. He's Force-sensitive. We take his blood, we're good to go. But what if there's a situation where Ahsoka is forced to try to defend them and Gideon gets a hold of her? Whew. Uh, I mean, possible. Um, that's a lot, you know, getting Ahsoka. He needs I mean, a they can get her in a bad situation. Person. We know that, of course. She can get in a situation where she just doesn't, like, she doesn't have it. She's trapped, you know, she's stuck. It's possible. I don't know. But like you said, what does that lead to? The Mandalorian saving Ahsoka at the end of the season? The child. Or, yeah, Ahsoka. the child. Yeah, that, that could happen too. You know what? Yeah, like, again, just a theory. It could go there. I hadn't thought about that. You know, again, I'm thinking of Ahsoka. They go crazy. Thing. But it, no, it, it could happen. It could happen. We will see. That'd be something we didn't expect, you know, coming out of this episode. Is, wait, Ahsoka's oh, trapped. Wow. Ahsoka's, you know, captured. I love that <laughs> meme. <laughs> it showed the last Jedi. I was telling Chris that meme. You see, like, Luke toss a lightsaber, but it's Ahsoka tossing the kid over the cliff. That'd be funny. <laughs> I don't want this oh, kid. I don't want anything to do with it. No, don't, we don't want to see him like that again. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's another Force-sensitive person. Gideon wants the kid because of what the kid can do. So if he can't get his hold of, a hold of the child, but he's in yeah, a situation Ahsoka. where he can take Ahsoka, right. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, he's looking for – that's what he's looking for. It doesn't have to be the child necessarily. Again, he just probably he doesn't even know Ahsoka's out there, and obviously a grown – Four shooter user is tougher to get a hold of, especially um, Ahsoka. Oh yeah, yeah. She's. I mean, she's you can put her at the top right now of the badasses in the galaxy. That's what I'm gonna say. Like she's got so much finesse. I mean, she can. Again, <laughs> it's gonna be tough to try to get her down. She would just have to be. It just have to be her versus all of them, you know. And Mando can't do anything, and obviously the baby. But I, I don't think know. The main drops we could get are endless, though. Where we are in the timeline, it just as long as it's done right, you could hear Leia. Oh Luke, yeah. Han, all of them are very much alive and kicking right now at this point. I mean, Alea is like, yeah, you know, very much a part of what's, what's going on as far as. You might you know, still be with Luke at this point. That's what's, well, well, yeah, she could be training. Right, you're, you're right. Let me back up. Let me back up. Leia was, you know, doing her Jedi and mother type stuff. Mm -hmm. And then she decided to get more aggressive towards the New Republic stuff as things like the, the First Order was kind of coming up and just there were issues within the New Republic. So you're right. Right now, she's probably not as involved in the New Republic. Good call. Good call there. Um, but she does get there maybe maybe 10 years from now. She's kind of more uh, into Right, because Bloodline's supposed to be right before she right. Awakens. Well, it's, yeah, it's like five-ish years before The Force Awakens, 10-ish years, something like that. I don't know. From what I understand, Bloodline is happening right before, right as Ben is beginning to turn. Yeah. So ben, like, is, Ben's ben is training with Luke. She talks about that there. in there. And then yeah. you, Bloodline's the first time we hear, I think, in canon, them actually say the First Order. So, yeah. yeah that's hey, the, we're, they're talking about Mando. We're, we're getting off chapter. Sorry, guys. You know, again. Sorry, yeah. Guys, we're talking about Star Wars. <laughs> it's all Star Wars. No, we, we got on the last Jedi. It just happened. I'm sure they're fine. It's with all it. together, gentlemen and ladies. It's all together. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Well, back to the Mandalorian. So, uh, yeah, Should but then if you so oh, not, not, like that's the big thing. Is, <laughs> that makes sense, I guess. Yeah, like, my brother is not even he's not a huge Star Wars fan at all, and he watches The Mandalorian. And he's just he said the other day, he's like, Man, it just looks like I'm watching movies. Wow. They, they've done such a good job with this that <laughs> no, I have the same story you did. I was with my mom this weekend. I my daughter had dance with how we were all together. And we watched The Mandalorian, in the recent episode. And we watched a few just kind of catch her up. And that was one of the things she said. She was like, it looks so great. Like, she was talking about the effects. Like, she saw the TIE fighter. Like, she saw Moff Gideon come in as TIE fighter the first time at the end right. of season one. And she was like, it just looks great. Like, she was, she just talked about that. And, and she probably, you know, I don't think she's even seen much Star Wars at all. Maybe the old ones when we were little or the, the original series. But, like, she just looked, she said it looked great. So, everyone's feeling that way. Obviously, I feel that way, but I'm, a Star Wars fan, so it's interesting to hear people that don't really have that in respect to be like, man, this is this is awesome. This is one of the uh, top-notch effects or whatever production. Right. Which it has been. Like, it really has been. Mando built different, civilized Star Wars memes. Amen, brother. 
the Mando is built different. And you know what? The Mando is built different, but it is built on the very most basic of principles. And that's just do what George did. Don't try to overdo it. Stay the course. <laughs> he, and that's what they say all the time. Stay the course. We're not going to overdo it. We're just trying to honor what George did. We're, you know, and they're really good. The Mandalorian is so good about these great Easter eggs that they place in there and how they, mm-hmm. they'll like go, they'll do these callbacks to the original trilogy and even the prequels, but some of the lines they have other characters say it's yeah. probably one of the smartest written star Wars. No, it's been so I've, ever, I've ever really watched. I mean, yeah. if I compared like what I'm watching right now with the Mandalorian to the new trilogy, I'm sorry for you Raylo kids and the new trilogy lovers, but it's not even close. It's night and day. It is night and day, man. It definitely has a different... And I love The Last Jedi. I think The Last Jedi was a beautifully written movie. I know a lot of you are going to hate on it, and I really don't care. But it's just what The Mandalorian is doing is just reminding us all why we love Star Wars. It really is. I love the show. And obviously, you know, I do like the the sequels, you know, um, Rise of Skywalker, all that. But, like, I do know what you're saying. Like, the tone that we get in The Mandalorian, it's different than we get in the sequels. And they give it to us in The Mandalorian. I think it's in Rogue One. You know, I think it's Love, in bro. The, it's, it's in the Siege of Mandalore, so they, we know they can do it. I think the sequels just suffer from the issues that we, we've talked about over and over again. We don't need to go into them again, um, even though I, I do like them. But you're right. Like, the Mandalorian is, is taken care of. Like, they're, they take care of it. They take care of the story. They have an idea where this is going. Like, they're not just, like, making this up as we go. They, they, I bet you they have some idea where Baby Yoda's going, where the Mando's going. Maybe, even if it's not concrete yet. They kind of know where it's leading to already. They're taking their time with it, and that's it how. Seems it's like they, it, right. So. It seems like they kind of have that uh, Kevin Feige approach. That's why Marvel Studios is just—they're so yep. good. Is they they've planned out ten years. They're ten years down the road. They're ahead of uh, us. All yeah. these stories and movies we're going to do. They time. They're way ahead of us. They're, they're way ahead. Mm-hmm. And you know, I'm not too big on like these you know really deep rumors about certain things. I know that they're already doing season three of The Mandalorian, but now I'm hearing that they've already got season four written. So, I mean, that's, but that's, that's good. That's the best news we could get. That means it's already been it's, planned it's out. It's been written out, right. They know what, they it's know what they're doing. They're not they, like, they, they oh, season two through. ended. Now where the fuck do we go? Like, at least you have a plan moving forward. And that's what, you know, you got to just have a roadmap, man. Thank no, God. No, absolutely. Um, someone says the shows are better than the films. I mean, you know, that, that sounds like, you know, out there. I think they, the movies do things and the films do things or the shows do things that are just, different you know um, I agree. the shows are allowed to have more stories and flesh some things out that the movies can't but there's also something about the movies that like when you watch them there's just a a magic and a feeling especially like those first couple times even when you go back and watch them that it's tough for any episode you know to catch that some of them do for a moment but like not to the same scale as some of the movies i think is the best for me at least that's what i would say about them I no, actually, I agree one hundred percent with you. That's why I you can have a season of shows and have a couple of bad apples, and, and like right. a, you, know, you can have a few bad episodes in there as long as it starts well and, and it gets you to the end, and then you have this great season finale or something like that. There's so much more room for error in television than there is <laughs> than there is a movie in <laughs> movies because when the movie's out, there it is. Like it's mm-hmm. not like come back next week for you know chapter two. So. No, I agree with you 100%. I'll never say, like, The Mandalorian is better than all the Star Wars movies as a whole. But, yeah. you know, if it's I had just, to rank it with the movies, uh, I'd put it up there. Like, it's Yeah, it's, it'd be interesting to see to what, where to put that, you know. Uh, obviously, we have to wait for it at the end. But maybe after this season, that's something we can think about, where you would put this, the first two seasons, and rank it with the movies. I've actually never done that myself, like, done Rebels and Clone Wars in my rankings. It's something I'll, I'll have to do. Um and again, like it's it's gonna be way different than everybody else is in here, but you know, I'll put that out there. What's everybody talking about? I don't know. I was gonna take a look at some of I think this one yeah. guy's like combining every fandom into one. I'm getting thrown off here. Let's see. Oh, Star Wars in the new direction. I'm gonna let you take some of these, Chris. I can't. No, yeah, they're talking about taking Star Wars in the new direction. Again, we're we're all just talking about where they can go. Uh, right. R2 is mentioning, yeah, they definitely have a roadmap for, you know, where things are going to go. And that's that's really what we can ask for. Like, that's – I love the sequels, all three of them. Um, but, again, that's that's the thing that makes me go back and think that it could be much better, is that there wasn't that plan. They're doing that. We we know what it is. 
Uh, we don't even need to, to harp on that too much. Again, they're making Star Wars, you know, uh, that magic is back. People are going to want to be in it like they always have wanted to, like if you want to uh, be fans of it, like express that loudly, you know, that's what, that's what they want. Like, that's really what they want. That's how they, that's how they get their money back, you know, is fans like us going crazy about it, talking about it, spending money on it, you know, so like they're, they're doing a good job. They're, they're turning things in the right direction. You mentioned freaking galaxies, galaxy's edge, like how great of a place that is. I need to get there. Um, Did you see the pictures of the hotel that they're building? No, I haven't. I haven't seen that yet. Oh it's my crazy. God. Has anybody in the chat seen the pictures, the first pictures they released of what those rooms are going to look like? Dude, the, the whole reason. So like everything that you do there, from what I understand and galaxy's edge is like right down the road for me. It's basically where the hotel is going to be. You're going to show up in a place that's as soon as you go inside, you're just like transported into the world of Star Wars. Nothing is going to look like you're on planet Earth anymore. You are now <laughs> and, and they take you through apparently through this like underground tunnel to where it looks like you're in hyperspace. You're going to arrive in this place where everybody, every guest that goes into this place, they give you like your Jedi robes or whatever it is that you're going to wear. That's what you wear the whole time you're there. Okay. So everybody around you looks like they're from the world of Star Wars. Yeah. Your rooms are set up to where the windows are looking out into space as if you're traveling to another destination. And everything you do, everywhere you go, it looks like you are just in the world of Star Wars. All the cast members that work there are going to speak to you in apparently multiple languages. You all get data pads in every single one of your rooms to translate and to use it to help out with other things like that. It will shuttle you underground over to Galaxy's Edge, so you'll show up in Batu. That's the only time it's going to feel weird is when you see dudes like me walking around in normal clothes. But for, <laughs> from what I understand, it is like going to be a once in a lifetime experience. Like everybody needs to do it at I least can't once. I'm going to take my, my daughter. You know, if it's not the next summer, like when everything's kind of clear, we're going to go. We're definitely going to go check it out. But yeah, man, it's just absolutely incredible. And that's, you know, thank Disney. At the end of the day, I understand people shit on these three movies behind me on the wall because they're Disney, but, you know. They bring their things to the table, though. Like, again, hey, I'm, I'm going to say it again. Like, you got to put some respect on the sequels. I know some people hate it, but there was some, some stuff there. Like, Kylo is a, a really good character. Things. You know, again, I know it's just in the future, but like we brought it up with The Mandalorian, like, there's some great shots. Like, the sequels look great. You know, they're very well acted. Like, they're not trash, you know, films, you know. Like, put some respect on them. But, um... All right, no, I, no, yeah. I, I enjoyed the, I just yeah. posted that reaction video. I remember when The Force Awakens teaser first came out. I was just, like, seeing Kylo... Crazy. Seeing Kylo ignite his saber the first time, I was just like, this is insane. Like, all I've never three seen trailers anything like crazy. that. All three trailers were crazy, I thought. They, they did, were all... yeah, they did a really good job. <laughs> I feel like that's the only thing the Mando lacks right now. I'm not is the trailers? By Mando trailers. Yeah, I'm the blown trailers away by the movie not trailers. Right, <laughs> Definitely if I, not. If I had to pick on the Mandalorian, that's what I'm gonna say. Give me a better trailer, dude. The I'm trailer. Think about something. Did you see the trailer? Come on now. What are we talking? What are we talking about? Practice. <laughs> we talking about practice. What are we talking about? Practice. Like, so that's the only thing I would complain about the Mandalorian. But the, the trailer. Yeah. I just didn't want some giant fan service, and that's what we got in the end. But anyway, so back to Mando. Yeah, let's get um, back to, to Mando. Yeah, yeah. Dude, so I can't wait for Friday, and I'm just trying to think of other things we might have missed in the most recent episode. It was nice seeing everybody, like, getting the gang back together. Oh, I, I got one, I got one, I got one, I got one. Kara and the Alderaan, maybe not something big at all, but they were, they yeah. were talking about, you know, he was like, what do you say, um, you know, did you lose anybody? And she was like, yeah, I lost everybody. And she kind of delivered it very strong, like. That was a good one, yeah. Yeah, like, you know, I, I lost a lot, like, trust me. But it, I, I think all taken away from me. Yeah. Right. I think all of us, because when I was watching it and he was when he said, did you lose anybody in my head? I went, she lost everybody. I think a ton of fans said that, too. Like, like yeah, she lost sure. everyone. And then when she said the line, I was like, OK, yeah, they did that very well. Mm -hmm. It also kind of puts like that deep seated hatred for the Empire and Kara. No, oh, yeah, for I, sure. And she's always shown it's that. personal. She's always Once shown it's that. personal, man. It, it's yeah. it's another level of hatred that you just. Oh, yeah. I mean, just everybody, that Alderaan thing, I mean, that was that was a horrible situation. I mean, hopefully they build up, and you know what? Maybe it's not the Mandalorian. Maybe it will be. Hopefully they build up that emotional tie to um, Hosni and Prime to where when it blows up, we yeah. probably do it Alderaan. Because, yeah, like when we see that, like it, you feel it. Like you just feel like, wow, all the people we know, all the people that have been there, excuse me, 
or who might have been uh, on the planet and it's tragic so well you saw how they kind of touched base on that when the the actor and forgive me for not knowing his name but he's playing the rebel pilot he foreshadows that big time for how the new republic ends up being wiped out because he says there's something happening out here oh yeah they're in not multiple places it. and they're not taking they're it not seriously but i am Mm -hmm. So right, so that and it, and Bloodline kind of goes over the same thing. Everybody needs to read Bloodline. It's a great book, but it yeah, kind of talks about how they it. had. They, it, mm -hmm. It's kind. Of, it's almost like history. No, I read it. I read it. It's, it's great. It's great. Right? Yeah. No, I'm telling everybody in chat like read that okay. book. It's kind of almost like it takes on like the history of where, like uh, I'm trying to think of like a good example, like World War II, like Pearl Harbor. Like you had all these signs that the enemy was coming, but you didn't pay attention to any of them, and that's kind of what bloodline lays out for you like the new republic had all of these signs that the first order was coming and they didn't pay attention to any of it no. and i just love how they kind of tease that in the mandalorian even this early on like something's going on out here they might not be listening to it but i am and you just know how that all ends up the first order wipes them all out yeah they, they again they get way too powerful far more powerful than they, they ever were um again there's just so much we can see i hate to just keep going on talking about stories that we can see because they're, they're really just endless. I was just thinking about other books and this time period and things they, that they could show us or we could get the origins of, but, but we'll just have, I mean, we'll just have to wait and see. The resistance. Uh, you have to, Chris knows much more about that show than I do. I, I gave up on it pretty quickly. I just wasn't yeah, that into um, it. Leading up to the resistance animation. I mean, I haven't, um, I haven't seen that from the Mandalorian, but there could be some things that, that build up to it for sure. You know, as we get, as we get further along, you know, uh, it's, it's definitely possible. Genius marketer people didn't watch Clone Wars to make the villain from season one be defeated episode by Ahsoka. A good way to introduce, yeah. And even for myself, so like I brought up my mom or anyone yeah. that hasn't that hasn't seen or doesn't know who Ahsoka is, you could quickly just show them in Caesar Mandalore. If they've seen the prequels, they would know enough about that story arc to be like, oh, okay, like you know, you know, I guess a little bit about it. But um, now you definitely want to know who Ahsoka is, like. She's a big character at this point. One of the more popular ones, I would say, in Star Wars, in modern Star Wars, you know, like over the last five years, the people that are fans now, Ahsoka's very popular. <laughs> you know, a good thing, too, about The Mandalorian is it's really putting a lot more importance, again, on The Clone Wars. So people are almost <laughs> being forced to watch The Clone Wars again. To be like, wait a minute, where, am I, where are all these names coming from? And watching Rebels, too. I was it's, gonna say rebels too. It's be a great. Rebel. It's deeply important that you kind of have an understanding of what's going on with Clone Wars and Rebels, because we, uh, Chris and I talked about it the other night. You know, we have people that didn't watch any of that, and while we're all over here, like, oh my God, Bo Katan, they had no idea who that was. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Was just some other Mandalorian saying, "Well, this armor's been in my family for three generations." They didn't even know who this person was. So, I, I kind of, I, I love that it's heavily tied in to. Clone Wars, the prequels, and I, I don't know, man, like, it's just, I, it's really, it's, it perfectly kind of ties into everything. Everything it touches, it's just, it works. Again, it's, shout out to Star Wars for that, because again, right. I'm, I'm a huge geek, I follow a lot of different stuff, you brought up Marvel, obviously did a, a fantastic job with their MCU, but we've also seen a lot of different franchises fall flat on their face, try to put stories together, and just have a long running series and storylines, I mean, I've seen it just be terrible. So again, like just the fact that they're doing it so well with Clone Wars, Rebels, Mandalore, like into the mainline movies. I mean, be thankful for that because it could have been a lot worse. <laughs> Trust me, you know. Right. <laughs> right. All right. So just for, oh yeah, of course, Dave Filoni, tip my yeah. hat. Yeah. So just to acknowledge Sith Lord over there talking about her boy, old, old, Jean, old Jean's boy. Yeah, that was funny. Like 18 minutes and 32 seconds into the episode, if you guys didn't see it. When you see all four of them in front together about it. shooting their guns right in the corner, you see some production crew, man. <laughs> and they ran I've actually never seen They didn't make like their own figure for him. Live. That shit was funny. I saw yeah, that. I need to uh, check it out live. I haven't <laughs> noticed it live, but it's I like saw it. It's like 1832. You can't miss it. It's like half of a body of a man just standing there. <laughs> and then they, they were joking. They like made him a character in canon now, like Gene's guy or whatever he was. And I just thought it was. Latest fashion in the galaxy far, far away. Right. So clearly in a. Yeah, clearly in the galaxy, Adidas. far, far away, far, far away, they wore jeans, <laughs> Still jeans. And, Adi and Adidas. So I don't know, man. It's a, it's I was thinking about that when I was I was taking like I'm trying to make like a Jedi picture. I'm like, hmm, how far out can you get with like a Jedi wardrobe? Like, what's something would be like the latest fashion? You know, we don't see the Jedi too much venture out in their fashion choices. <laughs> right, it's just At least supposed to be. Cool. 
the ones in canon that we've seen, like in live action and stuff. <laughs> I wonder where George got that influence from. I know he has a lot of like Western and a lot of um, oh, just like samurai like culture, Asian, yeah, Asian like, samurai <laughs> culture. So maybe it's kind of more like monks. Yeah. You know, they dress very plain. You're not supposed to look glamorous. It's just they like you know, yoga, mental focus, kind of zen, kind of that. You know, yeah. I'm guessing that would pay with your salary to sit down in front of George Lucas and just listen to him talk for Star Wars for 20 minutes. Like, where do I send the check? Where do you want to meet? I'll even buy lunch. Like, just well, break it see, down for me. You see, you know, with a lot of the creatures that he's made and, like, yeah. he just had a huge imagination. Like, there was so much he wanted to give us. You know, again, like what we're talking about, he can't, we're not going to get everything, but there's so much they can, can do with the universe that he's created, man. What do we got here? Uh, Filoni has to have severe back pain from carrying the future of Star Wars on his back. Hey. Right now? Yeah. Pay him. Pay the man. Pay the man whatever he wants. Right. But right now is the first back. time in a long time we seem to all be in agreement about something in Star Wars. So, yeah. I mean, there's pretty much everything we've been doing. Yeah. Again, Mike, you can have your problems with Rebels or, or, or Clone Wars, you know, but... The consensus is those were very successful, great shows. Same with Mandalorian. So, like, everything he's doing, you know, you can't help but be excited about whatever he puts together, you know. And, again, there's a lot of credit to go around with that. We talked about the directors. I think the, all the directors, um, what's her name, Bryce or Howard or whatever, she's been a director. Bryce well, Dallas think, Howard. Uh, Dave obviously does a great job. Like, you know, um, a lot of people to give credit to. Like you said, that show on Disney+, Plus, the gallery or whatever, you get to see those all the people coming together. All of their Star Wars fans, great uh, creators, you know, smart people, and they, they just do a great job. So, again, you put the right people, get the right crew together, have a plan. This is this is what you get. It's what oh, you yeah. get. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Friday, man. I can't come fast enough. We'll go for about five more minutes. Let's see if any, any questions in the chat before we kind of get to the wrap it up, talking about next week's episode, maybe. A little, yeah, last, a little last bit. Hold on, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, well, you know, he could have had a pair of Chuck Taylors on, man. Who gives a shit? You know what I'm trying to say. Who cares? I just thought it was funny. You know, the funny thing is, is like, I'm t everybody's, like, tagging Carl uh, Weathers, too. Like, oh, my God, dude, incredible episode. You did incredible episode. And I'm, like, that one guy that <laughs> had the picture of the jeans, dude. And I just I tagged him over on Twitter, and I was just, like, casual Friday in the Empire. But maybe he saw him. Maybe he didn't see it, but... He did a great job, man. At least, I mean, it was a great episode. He directed a great episode. I don't think it's as like crazy as Game of Thrones, where you literally had a cup of Starbucks coffee in the middle <laughs> of an important scene. It doesn't go that far. Yeah, you only see the guy for a second in Star Wars. That fucking Starbucks cup was there for like three frames. Mando, you nice to fan them. Yeah, I remember. Okay, this is just someone put it out there as a report. They were saying that uh, maybe. John Favreau was saying maybe Game of Thrones could influence some of the future of the show. Take that with a grain of salt. I might be misinterpreting what I heard there, but uh, you know, it could be all possible. You know, with the Mandalore, maybe the, the, the throne is Mandalore and the dark saber. I don't know, and they're all trying to you know get that power. I don't. I'm just you know spitballing there, but I kind of like that though. Like all of these different, like the dark saber is what everybody's trying to get a hold of. Just like. It just represents so much power at this point with no empire, you know, the new Republic right. is what it is. Like maybe just like Mandalore just is just, you know, that next thing. You have the new Republic and you have Mandalore. It's like, I don't know, <laughs> the Targaryens and the, I don't know, the, the, the Starks or the, what were they called? The White Walkers. The poor, the poor the, Starks, man. <laughs> I, I don't know what family would, uh, maybe, the, maybe the Skywalkers would be the Starks. The, St <laughs> yeah, the, the Skywalker family. Where Skywalkers would be the Starks. They've just been screwed the whole time. They'll come <laughs> out on top in the end, but my God, they're going to go well, through hell to get there. No, then they're like, they're like the, the Lannisters. Like they just, they have so much power. Like there, there's not many of them, but they just always get in their own way. Like the, you know, they have all the power they need, but they just get, they're always the screwed up. Whew. They're playing the light and the dark. I just, uh, I don't know, man. Like, what do we got? Four days? Four more days to get to Friday? The question is, is what am I going to get after this Friday? So if we, let's, let's wrap it up by talking about Friday. So let's just say we get Ahsoka. If this is everything we want, like get us to Friday so we can finally see Ahsoka, then we have three more episodes after that. Right. And that, that kind of goes to what you're saying. Like, what if something bad happened in this episode? Ahsoka's captured, Mando's captured. I guess Mando, he could be captured. 
but like I feel like yeah. we're gonna be here on mon next Monday. Like, oh my god, get, yeah. Like, once like, again, wow, get, get, get everything is flipped upside down. Like, what <laughs> get we Friday. Was, we gotta go. Like, oh yeah, we saw a circle, but look what this that look at this that just happened. Like, yeah, we're just thinking about it different. Like, we're just completely different circumstances where we are. Like we're getting choked out. We're like, how are we gonna get out of here? Like, what's what's about to happen? That'd be nice. We, we haven't been there. That's actually something that Star Wars hasn't given us. I'm trying to think of when the last time we just felt like, oh my goodness, like there's no way out. Like, um, how did this happen? Like, I, I don't know. I'm trying to think. The man. The, the only two times I can think of that is Empire Strikes Back and The Last Jedi. You have it, literally been pushed to the edge of obliteration. Well, yeah. You are on your ass. Like Empire Strikes Back ends with Han frozen and gone. Luke is fucked up recovering from his fight. Yeah, there, yeah. Oh, there's not go. much left of the rebels. They're, they had a hell of a lot more at that time, but it's like you're literally left in this like, okay, what do we do now? And then in The Last Jedi, it's even greater. There's literally a handful of them that are left right. on the Falcon. That's all you have left. It doesn't look like they have anything, right? Yeah. Right. That's you are a, basically that's sitting a good there on the, the brink of obliteration you're about to be just finished oh, off so that he would brings be up revenge of, the sith. revenge of the sith like yeah that's probably like the best one. revenge of the sith is another revenge one of the sith is obviously <laughs> number one probably just if we just feel like wow what has happened <laughs> and the clone wars like you talk about being alone clone wars ends with ahsoka with nobody there you go that and that that nobody ending, that ending was perfect perfect right it's, it's her and rex mm -hmm. her alone. and rex so we're just looking out, and we see Vader. Just yeah, that was that's a really good one too. That's a really that's a. Really yeah, it's also really great about that ending for Clone Wars is when she leaves the lightsabers, mm -hmm. unarmed. Ahsoka walks away unarmed. <laughs> like I'm done with all of it. Like so, those are her weapons. That's what's supposed to defend her. She left that shit behind. I'm done with it. So you talk about somebody that's like walking into a, a scary time. Like the Jedi have all been wiped out. She's got a, a clone trooper with her. He's being hunted now too. They're all being hunted. So, yep. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's. I guess there's been quite a few times where the stakes have been just. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I just wasn't thinking, and I guess it just hasn't happened as much in the Mandalorian. Like they usually try to wrap it up and make us think that for the most part everything's wrapped up that episode. No, uh, but I think you're right. I think you're onto something with that. We're due for that again. Yeah, we're due for it. And like you said, we still got three more episodes to try to get things back on our side. You know. <laughs> All right, let's do, some quick, let's do some quick over unders. You're you're a sports man, so am I. All right, all right. So give me some give me some odds here. Ahsoka dies in the Mandalorian. I mean, that's not very likely to me. Um, not in the not in the Mandalorian. I don't think she's gonna die in the Mandalorian. This is not. Mm, I just I don't see that happening. I think that'd be tough to do. Again, they haven't even built her up enough in the way for this to be like a good death for her. In my opinion, that's just how I'm thinking about it now. Okay. Uh, I think she deserves a different, you know, like, again, she could have died against Vader. She didn't, like, they, they did what they did. She didn't die against Vader. Because of that, I think that, I don't know if killing her in the Mandalorian, I think she's above that. Unless she does just come, become a part of this, the rest of this season. If she's, like, in every single episode moving forward and then at the end, you know, gives it what she has, maybe. But right now, I don't see it. What, what, do, you do, what do you think about it? I, you know. 25%. 25%. Okay. Okay. Twenty-five percent. All right. Odds on the Mandalorian dying. Oh goodness! And see, that's. I think doesn't even have to be this season. So let's just say we can run the whole series. So I would say that is much more likely to me because you talk about all of the stories that they could be doing uh, in Star Wars. This kind of this could have an end. You know, whatever the Mandalorian's job is to do, whether it's to take over Mandalore, maybe just become a better person, or just deliver the baby, whatever it becomes. It can end at a certain point, and maybe it does, like you said, maybe it ends with him dying in some way, in, in a great heroic way. That's possible. I could see that, and then they continue to make other stories based off of what we got from The Mandalorian. So I think his story is supposed to, to end somehow, whether it's through death or just, you know, finale, like I'm here, like I'm at peace. So, I, you know, we'll see. I think more likely, I would say maybe 30-ish percent, 30 uh, percent, something like that, 25, 30 percent. Odds that the child dies. Who dies? Nah, I don't think we're going to see the child die. But at the same time, if he's living, you know, where is he? What's he about in the current time? You know, it's our current time. <sighs> Dude, that's – if they kill the child, you talk about balls. Yeah, you can, I was say, yeah. You can put that up there past what they did in Infinity War. 
Oh, Literally, yeah. there are astronauts in space right now with a baby Yoda doll <laughs> in fucking space. And if yeah. you killed that kid, no, yeah, there would be a moment of <laughs> silence around the world. <laughs> the stock exchange would crash tomorrow. Like, <laughs> I put it a 0% chance. Now, I thought the kid, I gave the kid about 10 to 20% chance he might go. Now, zero. The child has become so popular. I don't even, they got upset when he was eating eggs. Imagine if they killed him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, you know what I'm saying? Like, the internet lost their mind over eating reptiles. Was, was like, they're not even real. Imagine if he killed this little guy. Oh. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, so. it's definitely low. I would I would say so. And then I, I would get the rest of the cast members, I think, are likely, you know, to die. Or, you know, I could definitely see it happen from Reed Carga to Cara Dune to, to Moff Gideon to right. you know, anyone else. They could all be, be had. So All right. Two, two more. What are your odds on seeing Thrawn? Pretty low, man. I mean, I think in this season... Or just in general, in this season, we'll go for this. We'll, go for this year. we'll, we'll stick to this season. This season, yeah, I thought. would say I would say pretty low, but I wouldn't throw out the possibility of a reference or a Gideon, maybe not a name drop or just something that you know he's out there, some kind of hint. Maybe I guess that'd be possible, but I doubt we. All right. see him. I'm gonna say thirty percent. See, I, I'd go at about three. So we're we're, we're a little we're a little off in there. I'm taking I'm taking the bet. So one of us is gonna win a lot of money on that, you know. Anybody <laughs> anybody writing this shit down? Make sure, you have, <laughs> make sure you have Chris and I's numbers. Three percent he's on Thrawn. I say thirty. The, the next All one. All right, last I'll do uh Ezra. All right, now Ezra. I thought you were gonna go with, with Luke, but for Ezra I think we'll get the Luke name drop. You can add that in. I'll just say 100% on a Luke name so drop. Let, let's go with Ezra. So, obviously, Ahsoka is the Jedi we're going to get. Ahsoka is a lot more popular than Ezra. You talk about people not knowing, you know, if a green, if Ezra showed up with his green lightsaber, some people would be like, who the hell is that? <laughs> like, like, who is this guy? You know, so they <laughs> have to do a good job introducing him. Um, I, I don't know. Even though he's a bigger character, I almost think it's safer to put Luke in that role, you know? You know, just because he's he's more familiar, um, I'm thinking about just what they may be thinking. So I'd probably put Ezra around 15 percent, 10, 10, 15 percent in terms yeah. of name dropper or or seeing him. Again, I, I I could be wrong, man. I'm going low on all these. <laughs> I'm, I'm just pretty gonna... I'm pretty uh, safe with my bets. I don't go out there and just go out on a limb. I'm pretty. Safe. I, I, I get it. I can understand. You don't want to take risk. I'll take risk. I'm gonna say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm not as risky with my bets, man. <laughs> I'm gonna take the risk. I'm gonna go heavy now. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go sixty percent, and here's why. Okay. I think that sending the Mandalorian with the child to find Luke sounds like the most, the greatest thing you could ever tell me is going to happen. Right. But. And the odd chance that Ahsoka doesn't know anything about Luke, we know for a fact she knows about Ezra. And Ezra is a Jedi. So right. if yeah. Ahsoka's yeah, like, she I'm does. not a there Jedi. Okay, there you go. That's a, that's a boost of the percentage. You're right. We know she so knows that's about That's why Ezra. I'm going to go a little bit higher there. So right. I'm saying that that's Ahsoka's right. like, I'm not a Jedi, but I can point you in the right direction. Right. That's I'm going to flip what happened at the end of season one. Season one ends with, getting in a dark side moment holding a dark saber and i can see season two ending with a kid coming out meeting the mandalorian saying my name is ezra cut the black season two over no for sure uh no, that's a good point i hadn't thought about it like that and that makes me think there's a higher percent chance that we do hear about ezra or ahsoka brings him up or points him in that direction because again she knows him much better than she knows luke i mean she might know of luke but she as far as we know they've never they don't know each other yet so you're right on that Perfect. Uh, we got a couple minutes. We'll take fire some questions, guys. We'll take a couple of you before we go. Brent Dodge. Oh yeah. Uh, the seeing Thrawn or Slim, according to legends. Um, never tell me the guys. It's funny. Of course, you know. Again, we know we know a lot of people don't like the Last Jedi. We all have our problems with it, but I, I you know, it, it is. I like it. Um, what's this? Uh, hey, we're talking don't, Star Wars. Don't listen to that. Don't listen to that guy. He knows what we're talking about. I might say. <laughs> uh, I don't speak French, but it's a beautiful language. Bonjour, yes. How you guys doing? Appreciate everybody that came out. Um, definitely follow me, Coach Chris Geeks. 
we'll be doing this every Monday, at least every week, you know, with, uh, yeah. on every Monday, Mando Monday, uh, talking about this. I got to still make my review for the episode. Haven't got to do that myself. So I know I got to get that just to put something on my Instagram or YouTube. Maybe I'll just take a clip from here, you know, and, and make that either part of my review, just some little clips from here. There you go. Uh, we just broke it all down. <laughs> So uh, this is this is always awesome. I think we had another great, great conversation today. <laughs> yep. Uh, hello, what's up, man? So yeah, thank you as always, guys, for everybody that stopped by. We always um, we get excited for this. It's nice to be able to just chat about Star Wars for an hour, especially on a Monday when you know throw the spoilers. You know, we're gonna talk about the episode in full. We actually talked about maybe doing it over the weekend or on Friday. I think Chris and I came to the conclusion that Monday would be the best if we're going to be talking about full spoilers, at least gives everybody a chance to watch it over the weekend. And if yeah. Lucasfilm and Star Wars are going to drop spoilers on Monday, then shit, why can't we? So no, yeah, for every sure. Monday, yeah, you won't have, we won't do anything over the weekends, guys. We want to make sure you have a chance to watch it. And feel free, like, fire us questions and, and comments on some of our posts. You can message Chris and I, shoot us questions over there, especially if they're really good. We'll try to bring them up during the chat, too. Absolutely. Like you said, uh, Nick has tons of posts throughout the week. I try to get one out a day, you know, just uh, things going on. Comment with us, you know, help us grow our, our communities. We can talk about this. There's a lot of different questions that we see from you guys that we talk about. As we mentioned earlier, we're just fans. We love to talk about it. You know, I learn something every time I read some of these chats down here and hear people right. bring up something or, or you know, uh, correct this, give us their opinion. I mean, it's all good stuff. All right, perfect. Yeah, we'll wrap it up there, guys. Thank you so much for swinging by. See all the love you guys are giving us. Yep. Um, and, yeah, we'll be back again next Monday, 9 o'clock, same time, every Monday. So we'll see you all then. Let's do it, guys. All right. Y'all have a good, good night. Good night, you all.